Kings of Elam is a roguelike RPG game that came out for the Jaguar. To be specific, it's an, ex it's an exclusive title for that. It's an aftermarket game from Phobos, who originally also done Asteroid, which I've actually covered not long ago. It was published by Songbird Productions. So this game, it basically has a goal. You need to collect 11 crowns, and then that's it. You gotta go around several levels just to get these crowns, and then that's it. But it's not too easy, because the game it uses generated worlds that are randomized. So meaning each playthrough you play, the world and levels are gonna be pretty much randomized. So you equip yourself with a sword, shield, and armor, which you can pretty much find by breaking up like crates, jars, whatever, or pushing some objects. Now here's the thing I'll say about this game is that you can pretty much choose which kind of skill you want to level up as, as there's several of them. There's strength, intelligence, dex, toughness, mana, hit points, magical power, two hit bonus, two damage bonus, and searching. And that's pretty much it. But you can only equip these things three at a time so they're all like highlighted in stars, so you move the left button, and then you can move, you can assign to which thing you want to level up by going to the right. But you'll need to progress through if by hitting enemies and doing something else in the game. But all these things are pretty descriptive, as it shows in the, the instruction book. There is a huge line of inventory as well. And each of these weapons also has their own dice rolls. As it's just a randomly number by the game given the range outcomes and more. When it comes to some weapons like 1d6, 1d20, or 2d20. Which are all just prime examples of the thing. There's also a shop you guys can enter to. That's where money comes in. The money you can get is by finding like just randomly or by breaking open stuff. Now there's actually some enemies you can fight as they'll have their own differences of how much XP you earn. So that's kind of pretty much it from here and then. Now I knew that the game had randomly generated levels, but it turns out your health and mana are also randomized as well. I want to also mention that now for some reason it doesn't seem to say it's an instruction booklet or anything, which from looking at it, it doesn't really say anything about it. But if you guys press the zero on the keypad, you can actually adjust your screen position, which can be pretty helpful in terms of like getting your screen scale to be right when it comes to the game. There's like, there, I wouldn't say this game has pro controller support, but it kind of does. Now, you can use your map by pressing the 6 on the keypad, but if you guys have the Pro Controller, you can use the right bumper to actually do that, which can pretty much help you know where you are or maybe anything else. But the problem is, it takes a couple of seconds for it to pop up. I have no idea why it does that, but it's kind of weird and dumb. And I apologize for the video footage. I swear to you, I was better than that. I actually was reaching so far on my first try, I got killed by one of the most powerful enemies in the game. I swear to you, I was close to beating it too. Anyhow, you go around exploring and killing enemies, finding some loot and whatever else. There's potions for you guys to grab, in including like antidotes or whatever. There's also magic spells, so like being able to heal, cure, or maybe some sort of spells to attack enemies. But I would just make sure you use them wisely too, because some potions can be pretty expensive to get, just, just depending on the size, they're small, medium, and, and large, whatever. But finding weapons and armor and whatever, like newer ones, can be pretty rare at times. But game pass these shouldn't be a problem. So if you see anything that still looks the same, just... I wouldn't bother picking it up only because they're exactly the same thing and they all have their own same hit points or, or same protection or whatever. The weird thing is that sometimes enemies can hit you and critical damage can pretty much also caught you off guard. In case you guys are going to come across a locked door, you're going to need some keys, but they all just depend on the level that they are. Like level 0 key, level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever key there is. You can also get them in a shop, but you'll mostly can be able to find them on 
all these level places that you can look into. Like I said, you can just push over crates that might be under there, or perhaps just breakable crates or anything else that's breakable. But don't go in there thinking it's going to be easy. Because half the times you can't hit enemies, or half the times there's going to be traps you'll be encountering, like fires or acid or anything else you guys can think of. The game really doesn't have any music, but it's more like noise music. But I think it's just to keep you engaged to be more cautious as to what you're going to be encountering. Also, there's food for you guys to collect. There's bread, potatoes, and whatever. They're more like to keep track of the score or whatever. Because, believe it or not, even though this game doesn't support safe data in terms of your, well, your progress in case you die, because there's no saves, so it's all one run. But once you die, the score is the only thing that keeps it safe. So your highest score, you have to make sure you try to beat that one if you want to try to outbest your original score. So keep collecting food. You can also buy in the shop, but again, it all depends to how many pieces of food you grab in this game. I should also mention that Jaguar rarely has any RPG games. There was only even two of them at this point. There's this game, and another game beforehand, Towers 2, which recently, like last year, actually got an enhanced version of the game, which I'll hopefully buy that and cover it at some point. But there is an upcoming RPG game from Phobos themselves. So hopefully, maybe it might come out later this year, or maybe next year, who knows. There's so many Jaguar games being worked on at this point, it's hard to keep up. But Later in June of 2024, it's said to be in having five more Jaguar games be announced, along with Lynx games and their new Jagfest. Hopefully, we'll hear some exciting titles. But anyways, if you guys like roguelike games, then this is more like a... If you want to like challenge yourselves to do something different, or if you just like want to try to master yourselves into like outbesting yourself or something like that. But this game has a score, so again, it's kind of weird because it's like at first you kind of think you know what you're doing and then it gets harder and harder. But I'll just say this if this is gonna be like your first time playing a roguelike RPG game, then don't expect it to be easy because it will get hard at some point in the game. Even in the beginnings of the levels, I think it just depends too because, like I said before, everything is so randomly generated, you have no idea what to expect when it comes to playing this game. So if you guys like to challenge yourselves, or maybe perhaps have someone challenge with you or whatever, then if you're a competitive person, this is probably for you. 